Hello again everyone and a very warm welcome back for our worship on this fourth uh, Sunday after Trinity uh, from, uh, in fact I'm in the Casentino, but from all our communities here in uh, Tuscany and Emilia Romagna. Uh, we hope and pray that you are all safe and well wherever you find yourselves uh, today. Um, with this video you'll also find um, the hymn selection for this week. If you've got any favourites that you desperately want then let me know uh, and I'll see if I can find a, uh, a, a suitable performance to send out. Um, I dare say I'll be inundated but uh, I'll do my best. Um, and, um, and also attached you'll find uh, a performance of Aviverum Corpus by William Bird and this is thanks to our choir director Mr. Richard Decker, um, who has performed this himself uh, and sings all four parts, which he's compiled together, which is just mind blowing. I mean, he's so, ta well, he's unreasonably talented. I mean, he's just so gifted. How anyone could do that it just leaves me speechless. Um, and it's a beautiful, beautiful result. So, congratulations, Richard, and thank you for your commitment um, and for all that you're still doing for us, uh, despite these crazy circumstances that we all find ourselves in but uh, but well done I mean, it's a, a beautiful beautiful result and i know that everyone will really enjoy that and whilst i'm talking about musical things i thought it might be helpful just in in news um to introduce a little bit uh the new musical team that is coming to us uh from september uh and Richard's successor, who I think um, you may already have heard of from the questionnaire that he sent round and who's been in touch with uh, Richard uh, to talk about the job and, and everything else, um, that is Mr. Scott Phillips. Um, he started off life at uh, St. David's Cathedral. I know Michael will be very pleased to hear that. Um, and um, as a boy chorister there. And uh, he did his A-levels at Ellesmere um, college, a very good school in uh, Shropshire, uh, and he is very, very talented as a musician and was asked to stay on um, as a music intern to teach music. So that's what he's been doing until now. Um, and when he leaves us, he'll be going up to the University of York to read music. Uh, so, Scott, um, it's great to have you with us when you finally get here. You'll be made to feel very welcome, I'm sure. Uh, we look forward to the, to the coming year and the music, uh, and I'm sure that uh, already being so proactive, um, you're going to hit the ground running, uh, which is a great joy. Let's uh, keep our fingers crossed for the, uh, the nature of worship uh, that we'll be able to share uh, from September onwards. Uh, Marlowe's successor uh, from September as our organist in residence is Mr. James Short. Uh, and James is currently the organ scholar of Exeter College, Oxford. And we have such a wonderful uh, relationship with Cambridge colleges. So many of our musicians are coming from or going to Cambridge. Um, it's it's nice. It's it's even unusual. <laughs> Every now and again, we, we, we get an Ox an Oxford uh, graduate or, or or someone going there. Um, so welcome to you, James. It's great to have you with us, um, and we look forward to some wonderful music. Um, if that were not enough, uh, we will also uh, be graced uh, to have with us the uh, a former organ scholar of King's College, Cambridge. Uh, that is Mr. Henry Websdale, um, and he's pursuing his career as a repetiteur for um, the opera, and he will be working in Florence with the Masquerade Opera Studio. Um, and so he's very kindly agreed to deputise uh, whenever required, um, and also, I hope, uh, to give recitals, concerts, and generally get involved with our church community. So welcome, a warm welcome to you, Henry, as well. Um, and it does sound, I hope you agree, everyone, uh, that our coming year um, is in very safe musical hands. We can look forward to that. Uh, the only other matter of news is that the annual uh, general meeting has now, the date has now been set for that. And that is going to be Sunday, the 25th of October. 
Sunday the 25th of October, 12 o'clock. Um, I am I'm just hoping and praying that, that we'll be able to meet physically, um, you know, because or, although we might have to do it in other ways, it will it may exclude some people. So anyway, that's the plan. 12 o'clock, um, well, after we've grabbed a quick coffee um, on uh, Sunday, the 25th of October for our annual general meeting. So if, please make a note of that uh, day and time if you can. And so we come to our worship for the fourth Sunday after Trinity. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And so let us bring to mind the times when perhaps we have let ourselves down um, and confess our sins to Almighty God who hears our prayers and meets all our needs. We say together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past. Grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. And Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> o God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy, increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal that we lose not our hold on things eternal. Grant this, Heavenly Father, for our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Our first reading today comes from the prophecy of Zechariah, chapter 9, beginning at verse 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you. Triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. He will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall command peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will restore to you double. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our psalm today is taken from Psalm 145, verses 8 to 15. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is loving to everyone, and his compassion is over all his works. All your works praise you, O Lord, and your faithful servants bless you. They make known the glory of your kingdom 
and speak of your power, that the peoples may know of your power and the glorious splendour of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Your dominion endures throughout all ages. The Lord is faithful in all his words and merciful in all his deeds. The Lord upholds all those who fall. He lifts up those who are bowed down. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. And our second reading comes from the letter of Paul to the Romans, chapter 7, beginning at verse 15. <clears throat> Paul says, I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now, if I do what I do not want, I agree that the law is good. But in fact, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells within me, that is, in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want. Now, if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do what is good, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inmost self, but I see in my members another law at war with the law of my mind, making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. At that time Jesus said, To what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another, We played the flute for you and you did not dance. We wailed and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say he has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent, and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. <clears throat> In the name of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, I do sometimes wonder if Jesus had a, a memory problem. He says his yoke is easy, the burden is light um, in following him. Uh, as his disciple. But, um, you know, it's not that long ago when we had the Sermon on the Mount and he was telling us uh, that we would be blessed if we were persecuted or reviled uh, on account of him. Uh, and we're told to love our enemies, people who hate us and reject us, um, which doesn't seem to quite fit, um, you know, with what he's saying here, that his, his yoke is easy, his burden is light. Um, what we forget in our 21st century living um, is that the nature of a yoke is something that has, uh, has been lost to us, We'd, most of us anyway, certainly um, in places like this, 
Uh, you don't really see yokes anymore. Um, but to people in the first century and to many people uh, in various parts of the world today, this would have been a very familiar sight. And it would also have had a double meaning because for people then, um, the Torah or the, the commandments of God, the, uh, with the Midrash teaching which came with it and so on, and all the rules and regulations and everything else, um, would have been regarded as a kind of yoke. Um, and that would have been immediately obvious uh, to the crowds, the people here, uh, to whom Jesus is talking. And in a sense, uh, what we're getting here is Jesus trying to refocus um, what this new yoke is. Um, in a sense, the yoke is an external thing. It's a, an outward manifestation of something that's going on inwardly. And so if we're focusing too much on the rules, <laughs> the regulations and so on, um, the niceties of, of ritual and, and all these other sort of things, um, then we're missing the focus, uh, the, the purpose uh, for which that yoke exists. And he's trying to tell us that, um, you know, the wise, the intelligent, the, the people who keep the rules, the ones who are beyond reproach, the, these people um, in his day are getting nowhere because they've missed the point altogether. And in this gospel passage, we hear that Jesus obviously finds that the people who are actually getting the message, the people who are sort of uh, properly focused, um, are the little ones. Again, we hear that phrase, um, you know, the sinners, the tax collectors, um, basically the ordinary people, N not the ones who are sort of all worked up about washing pots and all the other things that people had to do uh, to fulfill the law. And uh, these, these were people who listened to what Jesus was saying. And the yoke, in a sense, is about listening. It is about being with Jesus. It's a bit like the relationship between father and son or mother and daughter. You know, it's, it's about imitating and following and learning from that person um, as, as we grow, as we move on and grow in our lives. So Jesus' yoke is actually something that is radically different uh, to what people um, had expected because it actually emanates. It may, well, it may well have consequences for us such as, you know, persecution or conflict or ridicule or whatever, um, but it's, it stems, it springs from the love and the mercy of God in Jesus. So Christianity, in a sense, is less of a religion than it is a, a lived reality. It is about bringing our lives um, into the presence of Christ. And I think practically for people of faith, um, you know, we we may find ourselves at different times in our lives asking ourselves questions and worrying needlessly um, actually about various things you know am i do am i doing the right things you know have, have i done this the right way um am i praying right um how do i get to heaven or all sort of worries and concerns that we have um you know we're losing the focus we don't need to worry about these things because it's, it's about being drawn into a much bigger existence uh, than our own, than our individual lives. Bringing ourselves into a living relationship with Christ is the only thing that matters and it is the only path uh, to salvation. In the name of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. So let us pray. Father, we pray your blessing upon your church this day for all whom we remember before you, especially our bishops, David and Robert, for all our community uh, and communities here in Tuscany, Emilia Romagna, and our many friends and supporters around the world, 
We pray your blessing upon each one this day. We pray for your guidance and we thank you for your love and grace as we seek to follow in the steps of your Son. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Father, we pray for the world which has been created by your love. We thank you for the beauty of your creation. Help us to steward that creation better. Not to forget the lessons that we have perhaps learnt from this time of pandemic in which nature became so much more visible to us. Help us to take our responsibilities very seriously in relation to environmental matters. We pray also for where your world is scarred by violence or unrest. We pray for the leaders of the nations, the governments, all those who bear authority throughout the world. We think too of all those who are having to make difficult decisions during this crisis. Those who are trying to relieve the needs of others despite the exigencies that it brings. We pray for all those who have been adversely affected in any way and we thank you for the commitment of those who seek to help and support others at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And so we pray for all those who are in any kind of need at this time. We hold before you, Father, those whom we know ourselves personally to be suffering in some way or anxious, those who are troubled in spirit, those who are bearing chronic disease or injury, for those who are waiting for operations, Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we give thanks and praise to Almighty God for all those who have gone before us in the faith of Christ. Especially today, we remember the soul of Paolo. May he rest in peace and rise in glory. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Eternal God, comfort of the afflicted and healer of the broken, teach us the ways of gentleness and peace, that all the world may acknowledge the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And dearest Lord Jesus, I believe that you are fully present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this time receive you sacramentally, come into my heart spiritually and allow me to embrace you and to unite myself wholly with you. Above all, grant me faith to know that I can never be separated from you or from the Father's love which you came to share. Amen. So in confidence, let us pray as our Saviour himself has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. God the Holy Trinity make you strong in faith and love, defend you on every side and guide you in truth and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you 
and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.